This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Today we celebrate the baptism of Jesus, and so we're going to give thanks for the gift of baptism. Not only is it something Jesus received for us, but also it's a gift that God gives to us. And so let us begin with this prayer. As we gather in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea you led your people Israel into slavery and to freedom. At the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water in your word you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life. And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given glory and honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forevermore. Amen. I was there to hear your morning cry. I'll be there when you are old. I rejoice the day you were baptized to see your life unfold. I was there when you were but a child with a faith to suit you well. In a blaze of light you wandered off To find where demons dwell When you heard the wonder of the word I was there to cheer you on You were raised to praise the living Lord To whom you now belong if you find someone to share your time and you join your hearts as one i'll be there to make your verses rhyme from dusk till rising sun in the middle ages of your life not too old no longer young I'll be there to guide you through the night Complete what I've begun When the evening gently closes in And you shut your weary eyes I'll be there as I have always been With just one more surprise I was there to hear your morning cry. I'll be there when you are old. I rejoiced the day you were baptized to see your life unfold. A reading from Luke chapter 3. Now when all the people were baptized... And when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heaven was opened and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. Let us pray. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. A number of years ago at VBS, it was during VBS, it was my previous congregation, one of the young children came into my office and he had a serious question for me. He sat there and even though he's really small, I mean his feet, he was in the chair, but his feet couldn't even touch the, the floor. And he's so cute, but he asked this question and he really meant it. And his question was, how do I know that I'm going to go to heaven? 
But that was such an important question to him. And I'll tell you my answer in just a second. But it's that question, how do we know that we're going to go to heaven? What assurances do we have? I think for the crowd that had gathered in Luke chapter 3, they gathered asking a similar kind of question. How can they be right with God? What must they do? And John the Baptist, who was preaching on the banks of the Jordan River, said you need to repent and be baptized. Now, have you ever asked the question, well, why baptism? Like, why water? What does water do? Why would God work through baptism? In many ways, you can maybe think of baptism as a metaphor, and a metaphor of washing, right? That maybe we're dirty with sin, and so we need to take a bath to clean ourselves off. And yet there's more than that that's going on. Because in, bapti- or in, in baptism, or actually in water, that's where God's deliverance and his judgment occurs. Throughout the Bible, you see this. It was through the water of the Red Sea that God judged Egypt and delivered Israel. It's through the waters of the flood where God judged the world but delivered Noah and his family. It was in the waters where, where Jonah was was judged as a whale swallowed him up, and yet he was also delivered to speak a promising word to Nineveh. And so water is the place where God's judgment and deliverance occurs throughout the scriptures. And that's what's happening in baptism. It's a place where there's God's judgment and God's deliverance. And that's why the religious leaders of the day didn't want to get baptized. Because they said, ah, oh, that's for sinners, and we don't need to, to receive this gift. We're, we're not sinners like them. We're clean. God doesn't need to judge us. God doesn't need to deliver us. We're in a good state. And yet we know the rest of the story. They really weren't. But here's the shocking thing. The shocking thing, we almost miss it. It says in verse 21 that Jesus was baptized too. Now, why would Jesus be baptized? I mean, if baptism is a place for sinners, why did Jesus need to be baptized? What's going on there? Well, in Galatians 4, we hear these words, and they can be really helpful for us. It says in Galatians 4, verses 4 and 5, But when the time had fully come, God sent his son born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under law, that we might receive the full rights of sons. In other words, when Jesus came to this earth, Jesus came to, to save us, but to save us he had to be born among as one of us, and he had to endure original sin. He had to, it's not that he had original sin, but he had to be born in a system where there was original sin. He had to be born in a place under the the law. And the law demands that sinners be killed, that sinners need repentance. And for Jesus, who's identifying as one of us, Jesus who's saving us, has to be born under that weight. And so, by definition, he's under the weight of sin. And so even Jesus then would need to receive God's judgment and receive God's deliverance. And so he jumped into the water. Now, when you think of that water, that water was, was sinful. It's, it's water like, okay, the sinners jumped in, but they're, they're trying to wash off their sin But Jesus is willing to jump into that dirty water. And that water had the sins of of soldiers who had come down to get baptized, soldiers' murder, soldiers' pillage. He had the water of tax collectors upon him, tax collectors cheat and steal. He had the, the waters of the crowd that comes into all kinds of problems. And so that water was dirty. And Jesus was baptized. He was willing to enter into it. They thought they were wiping off their sin. And here Jesus is jumping into the water to become sinful, to 
not again personal sin, but to bring our sin upon himself. He's, he's covering himself in that stinky water, that sinful water, because he has to deliver us. That's why Jesus got baptized, or that's one of the reasons. And what's so beautiful is, is what happens next. As Jesus comes out of the water, we hear God say, You are my son whom I love. With you I am well pleased. God is, in other words, God is pleased with what Jesus is doing. God is happy with what, God, what Jesus is doing because God knows that Jesus is saving humanity and Jesus is willing to get stinky to rescue us. And that pleases him because he wants us to be saved. There's this great hymn, when, What Wondrous Love Is This? And these are the words. When I was sinking down, sinking down, sinking down, when I was sinking down, sinking down, when I was sinking down beneath God's righteous frown, Christ laid aside his crown for my soul, for my soul. Christ laid aside his crown for my soul. In other words, as I'm sinking into the waters, into the depths of, of sin and despair, Jesus is jumping down into it. He's, he's willing to go down there to, to rescue us. You know, I've shared this before, but when I was a child, I, I had, was at the edge of a pool and I fell in. And I don't have much memories of it. I remember falling in, and I remember looking up as my dad jumped in to grab me and, and pull me out. That's why Jesus was baptized. Jesus is jumping into the water, into sin, into judgment, in order to rescue, to deliver us. That's why Jesus was baptized. Now I want to go back to that young child who asked me that question. So when he was asking this question, this young kid I know his family, and he had a really good theological mind, even as a young kid, and he has a great one now. But I said this, I said, let me read to you from the Bible, Romans 6. He said, great. So I read him these words. Do you not know that all of us who are baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life. And then I asked him this question. I asked him a few questions. I asked him, does God tell the truth? And he said, yes. And I said, are you baptized? He said, yes. Does that mean you're united to Jesus? And he said, yes. And where Jesus goes, you go? He said, yes. And has Jesus gone to heaven? He said, yes. And then at that moment, everything fired for him. And he goes, if Jesus is in heaven, that means I get to go to heaven too. <laughs> and at that moment, I said, yes. Why was Jesus baptized? Save us. So that we go to heaven. Because God tells the truth. And God's word is true. You are baptized. You're going to go to heaven. Rejoice and be glad. Amen. Let us proclaim our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended to heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Holy and gracious God, we thank and praise you that you sent your spirit upon Jesus at his baptism, and that you send your spirit upon us in our baptism. We are little anointed ones. We are Christians because of the spirit. 
We ask, gracious God, that you would rev up the Spirit within us and within your church so that we would share the good news of God's great love for this world. Watch over your church. Help it to grow. Help it to be faithful in its witness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, gracious God, for those in our midst who are in need of healing, those who are hurting, those whom we love, as we silently bring them before you in our prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Finally, gracious God, as, as the school year begins again for school children and college students, we ask that this semester would be a good semester, that people would thrive, and that our children would learn, bless teachers, bless families, bless students. We pray all these things in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. You are free in Christ. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Have a glorious rest of your day. Amen.